Okay, welcome back. The recording automatically stopped there and I freaked out a little bit, so I went ahead and saved it. I think I was just low on hard disk space, so I believe I have resolved that problem, and we'll keep going. In any case, where we left off, we found that if we change a file, if we change our program, we won't see the changes when running it unless we actually recompile the file. So what I'm going to do now is go back, recompile the file, and when I run it, we're going to see we have the new greeting. Sorry, wrong way. We're going to see we have the new greeting. Hello, everybody. I hope you're having a good day. We have the new greeting because I ran Java C. Okay, I ran Java C to recompile. Let's see what happens when something goes wrong. Let's say that I forget my open curly. That's what we call a syntax error because it is an error in the syntax of the program we're trying, trying to run. Let me try to compile this now. We'll see we get a open curly expected message, one error. Okay, believe it or not, that's our friend. That's going to tell us when we've made mistakes, like we've forgotten an open curly. Some of them aren't as obvious. If I take off the double quote that terminates my string literal and recompile now, it will give me close paren expected, close parenthesis. That's not exactly the problem. The problem is it doesn't see the close parenthesis because we never closed out the string. So we have to be careful. Careful programming will prevent a lot of these syntax errors from occurring. And there we go, we compile successfully. And that's gonna make our life a whole lot easier. So I run again, there we are, we're back to normal. Now, between this and the bit exercise we had earlier, I've probably scared you, but not to worry. This is one option for using Java. Another option is to use an integrated development environment. That makes things a whole lot easier. This is what I'm using. It's going to be a little bit tricky to try to get this all in the screencast-o-matic, uh, but this is one that we'll use for class called NetBeans. A lot of the things that we just saw, we can automate with NetBeans. And this is going to be a real squeeze to get it in. Oh, soup. No. Okay. One second. Okay. One moment. Sorry. I have managed to tab away. Okay. There we go. Uh, this is NetBeans. NetBeans is an integrated development environment. What that means is that it has an editor and a compiler. So it, we can edit and compile our programs. It also has a Java virtual machine so that we can run the programs. And it also has a debugger. That will be one of our best friends. And I strongly recommend getting to know the debugger very well. NetBeans is open source and therefore it's free. Uh, one second, please. Okay. Uh, one moment, please. And I will show you. Whoops. Sorry, I'm having browser issues. I will show you how to get NetBeans. Okay, there are two ways to get NetBeans. One is to just go to netbeans.org. But the trick is NetBeans actually comes in two parts. There's, there's the editor, uh, the IDE, basically. And you also need a Java virtual machine. So one option you have is you can just click here and download NetBeans. But the problem is if you don't have a Java virtual machine, you might need the bundle, okay? If, if you don't know if you have a, a JDK, you probably don't. So my recommendation to you is to come to the NetBeans download and click here, JDK with NetBeans IDE Java SE bundle. Uh, this is what I would recommend, okay? Grab this one. This will install both the JDK and NetBeans. Once again, it's free. There's no charge. Uh, you can put it on anything you want. It comes with... Uh, this will work on Windows, Linux, and Solaris. Uh, for Apple, it's a little trickier. Apple has decided not to support Java anymore out of the box. Uh, they leave it up to somebody else to figure out. So you can run NetBeans on Apple. You just you have to do it the old way. You have to download the JDK separately and then download NetBeans. So that's a little trickier. Um, you know, Google's your friend. So we say um, NetBeans on Apple. 
or on Mac if you wish. Uh, you know, here you go. Follow the link and, and go from there. Okay. Okay, so back to NetBeans. I'm going to recreate the project I did, and this time I'm going to do it in NetBeans. What I'm going to do, and by the way, uh, this will be important for your programming assignment, because you're going to want to do this in the programming assignment. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Okay, I'm going to want to go to File, and then New Project. Then Java Application, that's fine. Project name, I'll call this, uh, let's say, greetings with an S. Okay. Now, take a look at project location. That's fine for me. See users Jones VR documents NetBeans projects. That's fine for me. This is an important one to remember because when you finish with your program, you're going to need to save it and submit it on Blackboard. A lot of people will do an entire program in NetBeans and have no idea where it is on their hard drive. Well, you're going to need to know that because you're going to need to go there, zip it up, and then sub submit it through Blackboard. So uh, look at the project location. Make sure it's where you want to go. Make sure it's where you want to put it. If not, then hit Browse and change it. I've used this NetBeans several times before, so uh, that location is fine with me. That location is fine with me. I'm going to leave it there. If you don't like that location, then you can change it. One thing I'll warn you about, if you're switching computers, be very careful because a lot of times people will write the program on one computer, then copy it on a flash drive and take it to UC and put it on another computer, and then take that one, copy that to a flash drive or email it to themselves and then move that to another computer. When you start doing that, it's easy to lose track. You'll have a whole bunch of different versions, and many times when I go to grade, I'll get something that's obviously not the final version. And remember the rule, I'll grade whatever I have in my hands on the deadline. So uh, it, it's very important that it, it's easiest just to not switch computers. But if you do have to do so, make sure you keep very close case track of this project location. Okay? Now I'm going to look at this location in a, in a uh, Windows Explorer window. Okay, so here I am, and let's see, it was C, I believe it was C Users Jones B Documents, and then NetBeans Projects. My Documents, NetBeans Projects. Okay, not much here right now. Let's keep an eye on this and see what's going to happen. I go back to NetBeans. Uh, create main class, greetings.main, that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. And choose finish. Okay, we'll let it think for a second here. And there we go. Now, remember all that syntax I did before where I had the, the, the comment and I made the main method? Take a look here. NetBeans has already done all of that for us. They actually did a very good job here. They uh, took a lot of work out of our hands. We already have a class. It's a different name, but that's okay. We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. So it's a different class name, but we have our open and close curly. And notice that when I click next to the open curly, it highlights the match and close curly. That's very important because remember, the curlies have to stay in balance. Same thing with the method. Note that it properly indented. So the method is within the class and it's indented by one layer. And then this comment is indented one more time because the comment is within a method. When you turn in your projects, that's one thing I'm going to look for. I'm going to make sure that everything is indented properly. Okay, underneath this, I'm going to type a line here. And I can type system out print line, but NetBeans knows I'm writing a Java program. And it's included some things that's going to make our lives easier. One of them, I can type SOUT tab and it will automatically give me system.out.println. Now, it also gives me the double quotes, so I can say welcome to our first session. Okay, and save, control S. Now I'm gonna click on, uh, actually before I do that, I'm gonna go back and notice that my NetBeans projects folder has changed, okay? There's now a folder called greetings. When you turn in your assignments, this is what I want you to turn in, this folder that NetBeans just created. Right click and with the zip utility of your choice, I use JZip, but you can use whatever you want as long as it saves to a standard zip. Uh, just zip this up, add to a zip file, and then submit that through Blackboard. Okay, back to our program. 
What's nice about NetBeans is it shows us this output locally. We don't have to toggle around with different windows. Other nice things are if we have a syntax problem, let's say that I put a capital L here, it will show me with the red line. A very, very important rule. As a matter of fact, so important there are two of them. Number one, if you see a red line, stop and fix it immediately. Don't keep going. I, I've had numerous cases where uh, students couldn't figure out the red line and just kept programming. But that red line made the entire remainder of the program invalid. Number two, I will only grade projects that compile. If it doesn't compile, I'll just mark it a zero, and that's that. Now, that's not so bad, though, because remember the grading system with assignments if you admit you didn't do anything just put five out of ten and you get half credit so if you really can't get something to work turn in the most basic java program and mark five out of ten on everything uh it's not common but you wouldn't be the first person to do that i'll tell you that much so uh, the ide is our friend contains the editor also a jdk and also a jvm uh, so this is what we're going to use to write our programs. Notice that we have our comments and that the editor colors those comments in kind of a light gray. It has a few reserved words that are in blue, okay? And uh, then it has our string literal in orange. So these colors will help us to see our program and decide how to use our program and what to do with our program. Okay. A few comments on the class name itself. The naming conventions in Java require that the class name be one word without spaces. Okay, class name one word without spaces. The class name, and again, that's this main right here. That's this name, that name right there called main. The class name can contain letters. All letters are fine. It can contain numbers as long as the first character is not a number. Uh, there are a couple of symbols that it can contain, like the underscore, but let's not even use that. Uh, let's just say no symbols. It shouldn't use any symbols. Uh, so when we name a class, it can be composed of letters. It can have numbers as long as a number isn't the first character. And for our sake, we'll say don't use any symbols. Now, the syntax that we'll have when we're naming a class is typically we will make it camel uh, I'm sorry Pascal case let me show you what Pascal case is Pascal case means that we put words together and we capitalize the first letter of each word uh, my former employer from college Radio Shack did this they used to be Radio Shack when I worked there and then they took out the space I guess they thought it made them look cool okay uh, camel case is very similar. With camel case, we'll do the same thing, but the first word will be entirely lowercase. So camel case, same thing, but the first word will be entirely lowercase. Aside from that, every word thereafter will capitalize the first letter. So uh, this will wrap up our... We, remember, I had to do this in two parts, part A and part B of, of lecture four, because my previous lecture stopped midstream. This will wrap up part four. Next, I'm going to do part five. We're going to start by looking at the programming assignment, and then we're going to do an in-class example that will be very similar to that assignment. So uh, again, we'll look at the assignment and we'll do a, an exercise that will be very similar. At this point, it'd be a good idea for you to think of some quiz questions and go to the quiz question suggestions on Blackboard and fill out some quiz questions for our next quiz. Thank you.